Hey guys, um, we're just doing a quick timeline video of, um, I think I've been saying his name wrong. I've been saying Deanna Stotch, but I think it's Deanna Stotch. I don't know, they say it differently than I'm saying it, so there's that. But we just wanna kinda do like a general rundown of Gannon Stotch, the 11 year old boy who's missing out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. So we live like nine minutes from where this kid, the neighborhood that he lives in. So Gannon Stotch, he's 11 years old. He's the boy who's missing. Albert Stotch is his father. Landon Hy Hyatt or Hoyt is his um, biological mother who lives like in North Carolina. Um, they share custody of him, but he goes to school primarily here in Colorado. There's Letitia T. Stotch, and that's Gannon's stepmother. And then there's Harley Hunt, who's Gannon's stepsister, and that's T's daughter. And Letitia and Harley have been the focus of like a lot of online speculation. Um, so that's just kind of like a rundown who everyone is. On Sunday, January 26, Gannon Stow uh, was um, seen by a neighbor in the morning. These are the things that we do know. So, um, but we don't have like a lot of details. Like, I don't know who the neighbor was, but these are things that we want to look further into and find out more info about. He was seen by a neighbor in the morning. Um, Gannon's stepmom, Letitia, Tisha T. Stotch, and his sister, Gannon's sister, biological sister, hiked Garden of the Gods, which is a beautiful park near where we live. Um, so, and people were like even speculating about that at first, but there was actually a man in a blue jacket who was hiking that day, and he was in the background of a picture that T took with Gannon and um, Gannon's sister. And he actually came forward and was like, hey, I was there that day, this is actually legit. So it's kind of like more confirmation of the stepmom story. So T claims they stopped at a Burger King on their way home. This was in a previous interview video, which I have listed um, on our channel, where she, it's the only interview she's done. She didn't show her face, but she's talking to, um, an interview, like a news interviewer, and she says that they stopped at a Burger King on their way home, and then she kind of like nervously laughs and then brings her daughter in the video to kind of like uh, corroborate her story. But, um, so yeah, so T's 17 year old daughter Harley confirmed that Gannon was home after the hike, and it's unclear if Harley was actually on the hike or not because in the interview, if you watch it, the mom, um, you know, says, we went on this hike, Harley was at work. They bring Harley in, the interviewer says, you guys went on this hike? And she says, yes. So I think she was just like a nervous kid, but it's hard to not pick apart every little thing that we do know, because there's a lot of unknowns in this case. So, so that evening, Sunday, January 26th at 10.45 p.m., T sends a text to a friend, we're assuming, Again, unclear, not a lot of things have been released like name-wise, but T sends a text that Gannon knocked over a candle and caught the carpet on fire in their house. So the exact quote is, he is freaking out, but he's fine. So I'm just trying to imagine like if you were 11 years old and you knocked over a candle and then like you were freaking out, um, like maybe he got in trouble, maybe, um, he, he like possibly ran away that evening and you know, teased the stepmom and she's left in charge of these children so maybe she called him out from school thinking it would be no big deal and he'd come home and now it's completely blown out of proportion. So um, all theories are possible and valid as well as her being um, the subject of speculation is also valid. So then that takes us into Monday, January 27th. Tish T claims that she allowed Gannon to stay home sick from school, which I had just previously mentioned. So he didn't go to school on Monday. He wasn't there. Um, and she had actually called the school. T had called the school to say he was going to stay home sick from school. And it was saying that he was sick or he had a doctor's appointment. Um, this was like another thing that I just kind of saw too, was that he apparently was like, constipated. It's actually pretty common with little kids because um, their nutrition's not that great and a, a lot of them are on medication. So um, it's not that uncommon. So I read on a post that 
she called in and the doctor called in medicine. But again, that is all speculation. That's not anything that's like real fact. So she allowed him to stay home sick from school. Um, and then that same day, the Gannon staying home from school. Um, and the night after, the night after the carpet caught on fire or the morning after the carpet caught on fire, she has it repaired, which is like, now that I'm saying it out loud, that's like very suspect because I feel like if anything happens like little, I mean, depending on how large of a accident or burn it was maybe, but if it's just like a spot that wouldn't be like top priority for you. And it would be interesting to know like what company did that and if they could confirm that the kiddo was there that day, if Gannon was there that day or not. So T, Gannon, T and Gannon go to pick up step, her stepdaughter, so that's Gannon's sister, from school at 1 p.m. And then T, Gannon, and the stepdaughter make a trip to Petco before returning home. He was last seen by T in the afternoon, and he went to play at a friend's house down the street. This is after they pick up stepsister at school, they go to Petco, they go home. He is like, hey T, I'm going outside to play, and then he just leaves. So um, that was about 3.15 p.m. And rumor has it that none of the neighbors um, footage, like ring doorbell footage. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the ring doorbell. It's just a doorbell that basically can record when it senses motion or when someone rings the doorbell. But like everyone has them out here. It's been really crazy, but um, a lot of the neighbors um, came forward and they say that they don't, they don't have footage of him leaving the house. They don't see him leaving the house around this time. Um, that's not to say that it doesn't exist and that he didn't, but um, if it is out there, no one has come forward. T was in the basement working out with headphones on when Gannon left and he was supposed to be home by 6 p.m. And T also said that they had kind of like a loose role of like be home when the street lights come on and it gets dark like very early now. So 6 p.m. it would have definitely been dark. So at 6 p.m. the dad, Al, who's out of state, calls the neighbors to see if they've seen them. Um, and then at 6.55, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office dispatch receives a call of a runaway child in the 6600 block of Mandan Drive. It's really unclear who called. Um, and then that day, this is still Monday, T finds a search on Gannon's phone and the exact words are, can my friends find me if my phone is off? Or can my parents find me if my phone is off? Which is, um, you know, pretty telling. Like if you're a kid who's gonna run away and you search that and you see like, oh yeah, my parents can track me. Maybe you'll leave your phone at home. And then a little while later that evening, a call comes in uh, oh, actually, this is around 4 p.m. on Monday. A call comes in that a young boy wearing a blue coat and jacket was spotted at the come and go gas station, but it turned out to not be him. Like some other neighbor uh, later identified this child as her own and not Gannon. So at 7.30, um, Gannon Stouch was entered into the state and national databases as an active runaway. They thought he was a runaway just based off of the stepmom's story and the fact that he had Googled the, can my parents find me? So police searched a resident and nothing was found on the initial search. It's the end of Monday. So this brings us into Tuesday. So now this is just, he has been missing like a few hours at this point, um, according to the, the original narrative that was given. So Tuesday, Al arrived Tuesday morning on an emergency flight back home between 11.30 and 12.30. And Landon, the bio mom, has flown into Colorado Springs with other family members. Um, so at 12.29 p.m., the case is turned over to um, El Paso County Sheriff Office investigators. So it had been handled by um, the General Sheriff's Department, but then they handed it over to investigators to, to be like, wow, this is a serious case, something is going on. Detectives conduct interviews, they collect surveillance, and they follow up on additional leads. So then, that was Tuesday. Wednesday, um, 
nothing was really reported and nothing really unfolded. There was nothing new, but there was at least 300 people packed into Restoration Church on Peaceful Valley Road for a prayer gathering for Gannon. And people have just been unbelievably support it's been an outpour of support for this kid and understandably so like he's 11 he's missing no one knows where he is it sounds like he had kind of like a troubled home life um as far as like his parental situation so wednesday not much happened that's when they had the prayer gathering um thursday january 30th there's a live press conference up upgrading gannon's disappearance to an endangered missing child and Gannon's father, Albert, and mother, Landon, speak during the press conference. El Paso County Sheriff Office requests resources from um, multiple agencies, and one of them is the FBI Crimes Abduction Rapid Deployment Team. Um, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office asks the public to submit volunteer applications to help with the search. So Friday, January 31st, this is when, this is like the infamous stepmom interview. and. So there was like a lot of allegations and negative speculation about her online. So she felt compelled to do this one interview and kind of get her side out. But I don't think she did herself any favors by doing this interview. You guys can check out the interview video. We'll probably have it linked in the info because it is just uncomfortable. So she basically slams the El Paso County Sheriff's Office and claims her rights had been vi her constitutional rights had been violated. And her 17-year-old daughter was briefly put in handcuffs when detectives pulled over her vehicle. She just kept reiterating that she and her family have been involved since the beginning and she's not been um, resisting or like not involved. She doesn't give real like direct answers. Um, she just kind of angrily talks in circles about the things like how she's been wronged. So Saturday, February 1st, El Paso County Sheriff's Office, El Paso County Search and Rescue, NCMET, which is abbreviation for some organization, and FBI are all out searching for granting, starting with the Lorson Ranch neighborhood. Which neighbors, family, friends, volunteers, and businesses are out searching while covering the city with missing person flyers. We actually had somebody like pull their car over and was like, hey, do you want a flyer? Like people are out there. Like the community is really coming together. Sunday afternoon, incident command was moved from the El Paso Ch County, was moved to the El Paso County Sheriff Office Training Facility. And that's on Las Vegas Street in Fountain, Colorado Springs. So it's off of 8587 if you're familiar with the area. So um, the sheriff's office said the decision to move incident command was based on information gathered from the investigation. Um, and also a follow-up to that, I saw that they were like searching in areas near to where their new command center is, which is again, like undeveloped, like open fields and like farmlands, just like a sketchy area. So Sunday, February 2nd, Gannon's story goes national. ABC ran his story. And at this point, it's been a whole week that he's missing. Like, I just, like, we've been hearing about this since the beginning because it's local, but it just feels like everyone was so relaxed about it and didn't, didn't give it the, um, the urgency that it deserved. And you hear that a lot with, like, cases in law enforcement, but I guess it's just hard to know because when can you ever be prepared for something like this? You know, I guess it would be more troublesome if like you lived in an area where they were like always prepared for kids to go missing. So this is the most recent update. So this is the most recent information that we have. I actually have a video posted of this news update on my channel. You guys can check it out. So Monday, February 3rd, this news update um, came from a neighbor. It's ring doorbell footage. The neighbor's name is Roderick Drayton. He just, he lived in the neighborhood. He lived, he could see their house. So he was extra um, compelled by this story. So he took it upon himself to go through his ring doorbell footage, like from, I guess, you know, from when the suspicion began to present. And he said that he found something and he called um, Al, who is Gannon's father, and showed it to him. And he said that when he showed it to him, Al immediately broke down. Now, it's unclear if he broke down, you know, 
sad, like he saw something tragic, if he broke down in joy, that he saw something that relieved him. It's very, there's no um, uh, like connotation that goes with this. There's only just words. So it's unclear if it's good or bad news. Police are not releasing any info, um, but police actually even said it's the break they needed. That's in quotes, it's the break they needed. So after that, investigators searched the house, removing multiple items and bags to take to the crime, la crime lab. Um, and this is just like, all the doubt you wanna to give to the parents or the step-parents or the people who are closest to him just kind of dissolves away with each story that they're revealing. So uh, basically in some, like the police are still actively searching and investigating. There is speculation that T may have rented a car Sunday night or early Monday, which how that would tie in is kind of unclear. Like maybe, you know, if she was involved, she needed to like hide out or something. But there have recently been sightings in Denver, none of which have been confirmed. This is of Gannon. But it's hard to know, you know, what leads to really follow. So I give them a lot of credit. So basically you guys were wearing blue to support Gannon. Um, we're hoping for him, we keep him in our thoughts. We're hoping for his safe return um, and for everyone to have closure in this and to know what's going on. Um, it's snowing today, which is, it's been a week and a day. Well, I guess one week officially that he's been gone. So, um, yeah, like I said, I feel really tied to this case because we live so close and um, he's just a little kid. So we're really hoping that this comes to a resolution very soon. Thanks for watching guys. Stay weird, the truth's out there.